So hey guys, how's it going? Last time we left off, we were finished with this. Oh, wait, that was a fail. I didn't even play. Right, we were finished with this. So now that we have the melody, we're going to add in a bass, okay? So a lot of people love doing the bass. Like I, like I said last tutorial, we're just going to use preset sounds. So where else to go? or where it better to go, than Nexus. So Nexus has some amazing bass sounds, because it just does, it, it just does, there's, there's not denied it, but um, th they might not be what you want to use for, like, sending off your demo or whatever you're doing, but it's, it's a good way to learn how to use them. So Transbass 13 is my favourite one out of them all. It just sounds amazing. Already, if I play this, it's going to sound a hell of a lot more better than what it did before. But seeing as I call it bass, I'm just going to link it to the mixer really quick. Basically what I do is I leave the first nine tracks up for the drums and the crashes and the reverse snares or whatever you want to use. And then 10 to 14 is normally like... Uh, 10 and 11 are normally like my leads. Like 11 will be like the lead which plays in the, the verse type place and 10 will be the main lead that's, that's the one that we've just done. 13 and 14 will be like a piano or a pluck and this will normally be a pad or strings bass will just be well, basically just bass but then we'll go all the way over to 20 and we'll just fill that up with um sound effects and vocals uh, normally a vocal order will be like these three these three whatever just just taking up those places but seeing as we have this we're going to look at the frequencies so we're just going to solo it so now last time we did a tutorial we were talking about how it's good to always cut off the low end on some, well on your lead instrument so it doesn't interfere with your uh, bass and if we play them, you can't, you can't hear the lead right now but as you can see there is a lot more activity going on here than what there would be here if you can tell like the red lines. If you know how the EQ works you'll be able to tell but if you've been doing music for a very long time or just if you're new to it, you, you'll be able to tell that the bass will be in the bass because it's, it's kind of in the name. But anyway, we're going to boost up some of those frequencies. No, normally people boost it up like over here, but I don't do that for hardcore. I'm going to show you what I do for hardcore. You don't have to follow this, but it is a good guideline to kind of go with. Saying that, because this is a preset, you don't really need to do too much EQ. And like in this, I just wanted to get some of that. To me, the bass sounds kind of distorted, so I just wanted to get a couple of those distorted frequencies out, but without boosting too much of what's around it. So it kind of makes this like wave type of shape. So we might just leave that as that, and that's that's actually done for the bass. And getting the kick in should be a hell of a lot easier, seeing as we are using presets. So presets. Pre oh wait, you don't get preset kick drums, you get samples, right? Um, Essential Club sounds free because that's the most recent one I downloaded. Oh, that one sounds pretty good. I think we're going to go with free though. Okay, so as you can already hear, this is just, the the levels of the music is just absolutely interfering with each other. So we're going to take all of them down to around 80%. It's like cutting 4 or 5 decibels off, I think. Um, but now, seeing as they're all pretty low, your, your overall master thing will be pretty low too. Just, just make sure it's always underneath the zero. It doesn't matter if it goes over, because mastering can always make it go down, or... It, whatever most people normally master at like minus six so just depending on what you want to do okay so seeing as we have the bass this is this is a pretty good bass actually i think we might actually cut off a bit of the low bass i know i know you're probably thinking like what why are you doing that but um mainly what i what i always hear in hardcore is the kick drum and making that really thump so let's just try and make that happen normally 
the kick drum will be boosted around really low, but then it'll also be boosted to kind of make that like really like so you can feel it in your chest when you're listening through speakers and stuff. It's um I, I am by no means a professional at mixing, by the way. If, if you can tell my my EQing is pretty sloppy, but this is just the basics and I only really know the basics. Uh, we we always we always take down a little bit of the upper mid and onward, or just below the upper mid, and just kind of make that weird wave shape. <laughs> So to me, this is sounding okay for a basic mix. This isn't by all means professional. Like you won't be able to go put this on a a recording album because it just it'd sound so out of place. But this what the point I'm trying to get is: it doesn't matter what you use as long as you mix it well, it can sound good. Like I mean, it, it is always better to use things that do sound good because come on, you, you do want things that sound good, but. If you are stuck with situations like this, if you can find a way to use plugins and s fill up these slots and... Oh, sorry, I, I knocked my microphone then, so I don't know if that's going to sound weird. But if you can find a way to make these slots fill up with really cool effects and it make it sound absolutely amazing, it will it will pay off. Just don't go ahead and use loads of presets and try and call it a finished product because, unfortunately, that is not how it works. So, if we just split all these off, if you uh, if if you have lots of things on one channel, if you go up to your pattern, you right click and you click split by split by channel, you can actually just split them all off and it, uh, re renames them what the it renames the pattern what the actual instrument's called. Like we have a kick, lead, and bass now. So it's pretty good actually, isn't it? Throw these. Up. I always leave like a little bit of room in between. So if I want to do any automation clips, I can just kind of slot them in underneath and I know where they're all going and then after I've finished it I'll rename all my tracks uh, that's kind of, that's kind of lie I never really do that but I do colour in the uh, patterns sometimes um... okay so now that you have like the most basic type of melody, bass, and kick drum ever. You might want to add. In, add uh, bleh, bleh. Sorry, <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. I was trying to talk, but then I just like kind of over talked over myself. That doesn't really make sense. But anyway, so this is the basic. What you might want to do next is you might want to add in some hi hats. So you might want to go to your cymbals and get some open hi hats. We we'll just call this hi hat, and then want to throw in some. So hi hats. This this is like absolutely terrible picking, but like normally when you're you are making your song, you're gonna take a hell of a longer time picking your drums, your your synths, your well, no, hopefully you'd be making your own synths because presets are not the way to go. As as good as some presets are, um, making your stuff does make you seem like a better sequencer or dance constructor or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> So with, right, we're just going to get rid of the lead because that's just kind of filling up some sound. Okay, so to me this hi-hat kind of like stays on for a long time, so if we just take off some of the out, just cut off a lot of the sound, we don't need it. Right, okay, so that is sounding pretty good. But because I've just called this hi-hat, I just realised I can add in a closed hi-hat. It's just like a little tap. If, if you know what drums sound like, then you'll know what a hi-hat sounds like. So... Okay, so this is pretty much as basic as I can make this without going into too much complexity and going with VSTs like distorting the whole sound or I don't know why I got wave shaper I don't I don't know I've, I have used wave shaper before but um, without going too much in depth on plugins and stuff this is as simple as I can make it so if you guys agree that this was pretty simple be sure to leave a like rating subscribe for more tutorials if you're uh, kind of new to this if you're not new to this then by all means you do not have to watch these tutorials because they are 
over the top basic for like for for people who have beginned like a while back but then kind of made made their way to like a stopping point because there are just completely not hardcore tutorials on the internet for FL Studio that I can find but anyway <laughs> Uh, if you guys really did enjoy this, then be sure to subscribe because there will be more on the way. Thank you very much for watching and see you later.